What do we have here? A Godox TT600. Let's set it up today in the studio. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Silva. Today, let's set up a Godox TT600. This is actually a very popular flash, mostly because it's the manual version of these uh, hot shoe flashes from Godox. Please notice that the one I have here is the Flashpoint version of it. Um, Adorama uh, resells Godox's um, equipment with their own brand, Flashpoint, uh, so that they can provide warranty and service and things like that in the States. And since I live in Mexico, well, it's kind of easy for me to send anything for repair to the States if anything happens, but so far I haven't needed it. Anyway, um, that's why if you follow the video closely, you, will, you won't see any Godox markings. You will see this as the Godox um, R2 zoom flash. Uh, just like the 685 and many other flashes, this is a flash that has a guide number of 60 meters. That's why the size of and feel of it is so similar to many other flashes. And let's start with a, a bit of a physical inspection. As you can see, the head of the flash can uh, tilt upwards 90 degrees, then the horizontal version, and then down 7 degrees. Uh, this allows you for to, to photograph someone who, who is close to you when the, camera, when the flash is on top of the camera. Um, but then again, this uh, flash head can rotate, can swivel, uh, 180 degrees to the right and to the left. There are a few stops in the middle, in, the, in between, but in general terms, you can just rotate it. Let's start with a brief inspection of the power source. Um, <clears throat> in this case, well, we have four AA batteries. Nothing unusual here. This is actually the usual configuration for Godox flashes four uh, batteries in a line, that's fine. Let's start setting it up. When we first um, turn the, power, the flash on, we can see that, well, it's right away in manual mode because it's the default for this flash. This flash does not have TTL. So, uh, as you can see, you can right away change the power settings and it will go from, let's see, from full power, one over one, to 128, one 128 of power, and then it's off power. And you can see that it, it has one third stop increments in between. Then you can see the zoom. The zoom you can find, you can change using this button, the zoom button, and it will go from 20 millimeters to 200 with many different steps in between. So, so far, no surprises here. What about if we want to change the mode? Well, you have other options. By, place, by changing the mode button, you can change to multi uh, or strobe, uh, uh, to stroboscopic uh, firing and then back to manual. That is it. There is no TTL. So this flash, right, just like as uh, it is right now, can be used on top of a camera. No surprises there. But as I have said before, where's the fun in that? So uh, this flash can be set as a slave flash in two ways. One way is optical slave. This means that when we get to this mode, this flash will wait for another flash to fire. So this will, be, will fire. So how do we get to the optical slave mode? It's super simple. We press and hold the zoom button until we see the SL function. Then we press set one, two, 
three, four times. This means optical slave. Then we rotate the wheel once gets, gets us to slave one. Two gets us to slave two. Another click on the wheel and it's back off. Let's get it to S1 and press OK. And then we press zoom again. We can now see the S1 signal. This means it's ready to go. As soon as this flash sees another flash firing, this will fire. But what is the S2? Okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Change it to, to S2. It's now in S2. This waits for two flashes to fire. Waits for one that is usually used for red eye, red eye reduction and then waits for the actual firing flash. If, you're, you, if the triggering flash that you're using is in red eye reduction mode, this is the way to go. Anyway, this is optical slave. However, this flash can also be used as a, a radio slave. How do we do that? Well, we press and hold the mode button. Then we, uh, we can see that the antenna is now firing, the antenna icon. We turn the wheel two clicks until we see the S next to the antenna. We press set and the flash is now ready to receive a control and firing signal. This is something that I really like about Godox flashes. Um, all of them have these functions in which they can receive signals from any other Godox transmitter. And you, you only need to set it to the right channel. In this case, it's in channel 16. And to the, you need to assign a group to this flash. Right now, it's in group A. But what if I want to change to another group? Well, we only change or we only press the group button repeatedly and that will change it from one group to another. And we have five, five groups available. Not all flashes have five. Most have three. Well, this has five. So you can set it up to group E. Let's set it there. Let's leave it that way. What if we want to change the channel? Well, not super difficult. We press and hold the GRCH button. And now the flash, sorry, the channel is flashing. So we can change using the wheel. And I really like to use channel nine. We press set and the flash is ready to go. Of course, we can still change the zoom value, pressing the zoom button. And that's it. We can now fire it. I'm firing it manually, but in any case, this flash is now ready to receive signals from a transmitter on channel nine, and this flash is in group E. But guess what? This flash can also control other flashes. Yes, this can be set as a master flash in radio transmission mode. How can we do that? Well, we actually saw a bit of it. We need, only need to press and hold the mode button. And as you can see, the uh, antenna is now uh, flashing. We move the wheel we turn the wheel until we now see an M next to the antenna. That means this is now in master mode. And now the indicator for a group includes the M, but we can change to all different groups. However, the group setting that we are seeing here refers to what is the, the group that we are setting up. Let's see. For example, right now the, the group says M. That refers to this unit that is sending signals. We can change the power setting from full power or we can turn it off. This means that this flash 
will not fire, but it will, but it will only send signals to other groups of flashes. Then we change to group A, and here we can set the power that we want to shoot. This only sets manual mode, and yeah, we can set it, let's say group A at 1 16th power, then group B will fire at 1 32 32nd power, and then group C will fire even at lower power at 1 1 28th power. And all of them will work in channel 9. How do we go back to normal? Well, it's super simple. We play, we press and hold the mode button, and then we turn the wheel until there is no other icon next to the antenna. Press mode again, and we're now back to manual mode. As you can see, the TT600 is pretty normal in terms of its functions. What I really like about this is, as, we can, as I mentioned before, it, its compatibility with the rest of the Godox system. If you have seen my previous videos, you know that, I've, oh, that I also own a TT685s, TT350s, and now TT600s. This will allow me to, um, to light really complex situations using up to six lights now. I really hope you found this video interesting, informative, but also entertaining. If that is the case, please press the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel or share this video with your friends. But most of all, please remember to stay safe, keep learning, and keep creating. And I'll see you in the next video.